Welcome in, my name is Ryan. In this video, I'm gonna tell you my favorite dice games. Now the games today are not in order of how much I like the game, but roughly in order of how complicated they are. We're gonna start off with the least complicated one, which is Machi Koro. Now Machi Koro is a really fun game where you are rolling dice. When you match the numbers with cards in front of you, you get a payout. At the end of the turn, you buy more cards, add them to your city. Now you have basically more potential to match numbers and make even more money. Now I'm kind of saying Machi Koro slash Space Base. Space Base is a really similar game where you're doing the same thing with kind of a space theme. I think it's a little more interesting, gives you a little more complexity, but also more to do. I, I don't own a physical copy. I've only played Space Base online on Board Game Arena. Um, I like it a little more than Machi Koro, but Machi Koro is just a really solid game too. So really either one. If you're looking for a light game where you just can roll numbers, when you match those numbers, they, the cards tell you what you get, and then you get more of those cards. They're both just really, really great games in that genre. The next game up here, it's a little more complicated, but I would say a lot more fun as in just outright funny fun is Camel Up. And Camel Up is just this awesome game where you're going to be rolling dice and moving camels around a racetrack. And the fastest camel wins, except you're not playing a camel, you're playing the people betting on the camel race. So every round, you're gonna be either rolling a dice, which will move one of the camels, or you're gonna be placing a bet on which camel you think will win either the whole race or a particular like leg of the race. One of the things that makes camel up so crazy fun is that you don't necessarily know which dice are going to be rolled. So it's really difficult to predict what camel is going to end up in the lead at any time. Also, the camels can literally stand on top of each other and then carry each other. You might have a camel in last place, a green camel that no one bets on, that someone just puts a bet on them just for fun. Then that camel rolls a three, steps on top of the blue one. Then the blue one moves, now it's on top, so it goes with it. So it is definitely chaotic fun. It's not a game to sit down and have a very serious, you know, beard stroke, you know, we want to play a very serious board game where we make serious decisions. It's more of like a, this is chaotic, crazy fun. Great game, works really well for even like bigger groups, like three, four, five, um, I'll put on the screen here what the high player count is, but really, really good, crazy fun game where the dice just generate that, all that randomness in the game where we don't even know which camels are gonna be rolled. Some camels might not be rolled at all, then when they are rolled, you don't know how far they're gonna go. Up next year, we're going to start veering into like medium complexity games, and that is the game of Stone Age. And Stone Age is a worker placement game where you're collecting workers, you're trying to collect these cards for end game score, you might be trying to get some resources so you can like buy those cards or purchase different types of buildings to score your points. What makes kind of it on this list today, the reason it's a dice game, is that other, unlike lots of worker placement games, in Stone Age, when you go to a spot, you roll dice to see if you actually get the resources. So if you go to the wood spot, for example, you might put three workers into the wood spot at once. That means you get to roll three dice on your turn. And then those three dice are divided by basically a number for the values different depending on what resource you go to. So if you go to wood, I think the value is three. So if you roll three dice, let's say you roll nine, you say nine divided by three, you get three wood. Now gold is more expensive though. Gold has a value of six. If you go to the gold spot, only put three workers, you roll that nine, you're only getting one gold. So you're always trying to decide like how many workers do you pile onto a spot? Because if you really want, you really want to get tons of wood, just so you don't have to worry about wood for a while, you might put six workers there. And then with those six workers, roll six dice, divide that by three and get tons of wood in one turn. You also might kind of, you know, take a risk sometimes, put just a couple workers on the food spot to hopefully get a little food. But it does some pretty cool, interesting things. You don't necessarily, lots of worker placement games, you want more workers, the better. This game is kind of a tough decision because the more workers you have, the more you have to feed and not being able to feed your workers is obviously bad. So Stone Age, really, really, really unique game. I really include it on the list. I think it's a pretty fun game. I like it quite a bit. And the fact that it uses dice in such a unique way, like a worker placement game, with dice where the dice are determining how many resources you get for going to spots. Now the next game is my favorite game on the list and that is the Castles of Burgundy. The Castles of Burgundy is a super fun game where you have a big board out there with different tiles that are going to go onto your player board into your duchy. And there's tiles like uh, boat tiles and there's pastures and there's castles, the Castles of Burgundy and there's city tiles, all the different tiles you're taking putting them onto your board and then taking them from your board and placing them in your little duchy area. And they all do different things. The castles let you get a bonus turn and the pasture score points depending on how many animals are in that pasture. And the boats let you get shipping supplies and make victory points that way. So everything kind of has the unique thing it does in the game. But what the dice do in Castles of Burgundy is when you roll them, they match up the numbers 
that will allow you to do those things. So the depots out there where you're grabbing the tiles from are numbered. So you roll two dice every turn, then you're trying to decide what's the best thing you can do with those two dice. Maybe there's two things out there in the depot six and two, and you rolled six and two. Those are the two tiles you want to just take them and put them onto your board. But maybe you don't really want the tiles out there, so you use the six to sell a resource you have over here to get a few victory points at the end of the game, and then the two to place one of your tiles onto a two spot on your board. So you might be using them in different ways. There's kind of multiple things. You can buy the tiles with your numbers. You can place the tiles with your number. You can sell resources. And also you can use dice to get workers, which are basically dice adjustments. So you want to have so many dice adjustments seen around. So if you did roll a bad roll one turn, you can spend some of those and then adjust it up or down number. Before I go on to the next game, I just want to say really quick that if you're enjoying videos like this and you're enjoying the board game content that we're putting out, we recently set up channel membership just to kind of support the growth of the channel. We'd love to put even more time and more resources into the games, into making videos like this for you all to watch. So if you've been enjoying it, you've been around watching videos, just want to encourage you, hit the join button. There are some exclusive videos, like maybe some funny outtakes from top tens that we do and things like that. Also, there's some like, you know, stickers and badges and stuff you get in the comment section, but really just a great way of saying, hey, I love what you guys are doing. Keep making some fun videos. Keep talking about board games and let's get back to the list. Okay, we're about to dive into some pretty complicated games up next year. So the next game is Wayfarers of the South Tigers. And what Wayfarers does is there's a worker placement. There's a whole big board with workers you can put onto spots. And then when you go to those spots, you get some kind of reward. You get a card to place in front of you, or you get some resources. What's interesting is the workers in Wayfarers are not your workers. Once you place that worker, someone else can actually take a card and steal that worker to them. But what is yours is your dice and everyone has dice they roll. And on top of doing worker placement out on the main board, you're actually doing dice placement in your own little area in front of you. And throughout the game, you're going to be acquiring new cards. You're going to get a new city card or a new water card. You set them out in front of you. And as that area grows, you might have like 10 spots to put dice into. And those spots tend to be pretty powerful, but they have to match certain numbers. So it has a cool way when you roll the dice, you might see on your little grid, that when you have a five, you get a boat icon for a five, so that dice cannot go onto all the boat spots. So several things kind of happen. You wanna upgrade your little area in front of you to give yourself more spots, but then you also upgrade what the dice can do. So throughout the game, you're gonna be overlaying your thing that says what dice can do. So you actually make your dice more powerful. Like you can put a permanent adjustment on the five spot so that all your five that you roll can also be counted as sixes. So anything you have in front of you that needs a six, well, now that's covered. And the six might be the spot that gives you a, a telescope, maybe, I don't know off the top of my head, but you'll see in the picture here. But it's kind of a cool thing where you're always upgrading your dice at the end of the game. Your dice are really powerful and you have a lot of powerful spots to go to. Just so you know, Wayfarers is definitely approaching the more heavy side of games. Like I wouldn't call it a medium complexity, but more, more on the medium the heavy side of things now because there's a few more things going on with with the worker placement and with a journal track in the middle of how you move up on that and and the way you place space tiles for bonus points so there's a few more things going on but the main focus of this video is the unique way it uses dice and that is again pretty cool how you have work worker placement going on with actual workers but then also your dice which are really just more workers so you have dice placement and worker placement going on kind of at the same time the final game on the list today is actually a cooperative game that is pretty famous for being difficult to figure out, and that is Robinson Crusoe Adventures on a Cursed Island. Or also, if you want to try that same game, a little more complicated and confusing in space, um, you can play First Martians Adventures on a Red Planet. These are really, really heavy. There's a lot of things going on. Cooperative games are cool because they're cooperative, but they, they give you a lot of things you can do. That's just a cooperative game where there's clearly one right decision, but every turn, you really just have a few actions you're trying to spend. You're trying to figure out what your biggest priority is. The way dice come into play is pretty interesting in these games. I mean, they both actually have a few uses of dice that are less important that really wouldn't justify them being on the list. But the primary use of dice in the game is that when you take actions, you have, you have two actions you can take a turn. And you can choose to put both those on the same action spot and do what we call guarantee an action. You can guarantee it's done and nothing bad happens to you. You can just take that action. But often the game is really hard to win if that's all you ever do because you never get two things done at once. You only ever get one thing done. You guarantee it, which is good, but you only ever get one thing done. So often what you're forced to do or what you should do is you should split up your actions into two different things. But when you split up your actions and do two different things, there's more risk of bad things happening. 
So if you only place one of your two action spots onto an action and you have to roll these dice, and they're interesting, there's three of them, one of them determines whether you passed or you failed. Another one determines if you got hurt or not while you did that. And then another one just determines if there's going to be randifications down the road. If you roll certain dice, might take a card and put into your deck and it's going to show up later. So basically you could have passed the action, but you caused something bad to happen down the road. So it's really interesting. You really, when you roll those three dice, you might have some combination of like, yeah, I passed, but bad stuff happened. Or maybe like I failed, but nothing bad at least happened. Or I, I got some morale out of it, which we can use morale later. But, but that kind of core part of the game is pretty interesting. One of the main decisions you're making is, do you want to take fewer but guaranteed actions and not have to roll the scary dice? Or do you want to risk it, possibly get twice as much stuff done, but then everyone's going to be rolling dice a lot and possibly be causing really bad stuff down the road. Now you might notice that there was no dungeon crawls or just monster smashing games on the list because those games just aren't very good. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. If you love those games or if you have another game that you really loved that I did not include in the list, feel free to throw that in the comment section down below. Just kind of flesh out this list even more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.